following three big health stories, including a new cancer-killing virus, a more accurate due date for expectant mothers, and how the so-called love hormone could help kids with autism. Dr. Malika Marshall is here with us tonight. And, Doctor, let's begin with this cancer-killing virus. That's right. Let's get right to it. You know, for the first time, the FDA has approved a cancer-killing virus. The virus is a modified herpes virus and was developed in part in a Massachusetts lab for treatment of advanced melanoma, which is the deadliest form of skin cancer. Now, the virus attacks tumors and stimulates the patient's immune system to fight the cancer cells. There are a variety of viruses being studied for the treatment of other cancers like prostate, bladder, and brain tumors, and they're hoping this first FDA approval will sort of jumpstart those oh, developments. Now, as someone who has a, a son who was born two weeks late, <laughs> a better due date, according to doctors, how they can calculate it. I think this would have been more important for your wife, right? You know, <laughs> many, many pregnant women want to know exactly when the baby's coming, but a due date is sometimes hard to predict. It's usually based on a woman's last menstrual cycle or fetal measurements by ultrasound. Now, researchers found that measuring the length of a woman's cervix may provide a better estimate. They found that if her cervix is longer than 30 millimeters at her due date, then she has less than a 50% chance of delivering within the next seven days. When it measures 10 millimeters or less, it's softening. She has a more than 85% chance. So it requires measuring yeah. the cervix, but gives women a little bit more of Usually you walk around and people say, you've dropped, you haven't dropped. They just... Say stuff like that. Uh, yeah, we need to measure the cervix. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and uh, two new studies involving a hormone which could help kids with autism. That's right. Well, oxytocin is sometimes called the love hormone because it promotes social bonding, which is impaired in kids with autism. In one study, children were given an oxytocin nasal spray twice a day for five weeks. The kids who got the nasal spray showed significant improvements in social, emotional, and behavioral problems compared to kids who did not. In another study, researchers found that oxytocin may be stimulated by a chemical in the brain sometimes called the bliss molecule because it promotes happiness. Now they're hoping that if they can some way manipulate this bliss molecule, they could increase the production of oxytocin in the brains of patients with autism mm -hmm. and try to improve their social interaction. So two ways to try to get at the same treatment. Huge story there. Yes. Doctor, thank you so much. You're welcome. It. Lisa, to you. Well,